Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button down below and you can also as well be notified when there is a new video by tapping the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you know when there is a new video. So there's gonna be new videos every Sunday at eight o'clock in the morning at the moment. So that's when you can get your Ollie's Farm fix on a Sunday morning at eight o'clock. So welcome back. I've arrived back from Agritechnica and I've been on the farm since coming back from Agritechnica. You join me here by the arena. So as you can see, the granite has now gone down. So the arena was dug out, the drains have been put in, a membrane has then been put down on top of the uh, the sand underneath, and now the granite is on. And then on top of the granite, there's gonna be another membrane put down. And then on top of that membrane, it's gonna be some more sand and then some fiber on the top for the horses to run around and they can do a lot of their exercise in this new arena. All thanks to Alan Collier and Sons who have been doing an absolutely fantastic job, I must say, of this arena. So I'm just walking actually along this arena in my new Nora Welly boots, as you can hopefully just see, guys. Down below, I've got some new wellies from totallywellies.co.uk. So go and check them out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. They offer very good prices for wellies. They're very competitive on price. And also as well, they'll deliver next day if you need it. So go and check them out. They're called totallywellies.co.uk. As you guys know, I've recently come back from Agritechnica. I had such a good time over there. I'd like to say a big thanks to John Deere for inviting me out there. It was great checking out the uh, the John Deere stand and all of the new uh, the new products which they had out there, which were absolutely uh, incredible to, to, go, to go and see. So whilst I was there, I made a couple of purchases. One was a Tanko bale wrapper. So it's a static wrapper and there'll be some um, sort of up upcoming videos with that wrapper and how it operates next year in the springtime. Now also as well, I've been looking at cultivators and I'm still a little bit undecided on which cultivator to go for. Perhaps you guys will be able to help me out on this one. I'm gonna go and see a cultivator, uh, a Pottinger cultivator quite soon. So um, when I was at Agritechnica, I checked out a Lemken cultivator, a Klongskide, and also a Pottinger Synchro. So I'm gonna go and check out the Pottinger Synchro. There's two different models, and hopefully you guys can help me pick a good cultivator to go on the, of the new tractor. Um, so some other big use as well, the JCB here, this has actually been sold behind me. So it's been sold to a free range pig farming company. So it's gonna be going off the farm in probably the next few weeks. And also as well, the John Deere 6930 in the yard, that has also had to go. So um, two machines, the two main machines on the farm have sold, and the objective is to update them. Um, so I'm looking at the moment at a small Manitou MLT 625 telehandler, and I'm also as well looking at a John Deere 6930 replacement. So I'm thinking perhaps a John Deere 6150R or something like that. I have been looking at a John Deere 6155R with a front loader. Now as much as I liked that option, having a, front, a, a new attractor with a front loader, um, I just think that sadly it's not going to be practical enough having a front loader. And a lot of you guys know we've had this conversation a lot about front loaders and whether they work and whether they don't. Um, but no, I've kind of made a decision now um, that that's perhaps not going to be the best route. I've, um, I've been offered a really, really good deal on a new small Manitou, um, so I'm, I'm sort of uh, debating that one at the moment. So that's what's going on with the machinery. I just thought I'd fill you guys in uh, with what's going on machinery-wise. So I'd just like to show you now, guys, this is what I've been up to during the winter months at the moment. So we've got our silage here. This has got to be fed out to some of our young heifers and stores on the farm. And the majority of hay which we've made, we've almost actually fed out the first three barns we've got to be really careful especially at this time of the year not to not to feed out like all of the all of the food to the animals okay you now join me towards the end of the day i've just fed all of the cattle on the farm and it's only about quarter to four on my phone um and it's already going dark um that's the sort of sad reality of the winter here in the uk as, as you guys know if you live in the uk it does go dark pretty early on so that's just something you've got to live with throughout the winter and before long the nights will be starting to draw out again and then it will soon be springtime. So just on the right hand side here is the bales which I brought in earlier on in the summer months just next to the backhoe and the equipment. So what I've got to do with these bales, once all of this uh, stone and this um, soil here has been removed, I'm going to move all these bales out and make a wall for the fodder beet clamp. So the fodder beet is going to be harvested uh, within the next few weeks and it's all going to have to come into this area here so that it can be fed out using the green fodder beet harvesting bucket which at, which at the moment is sitting inside. Okay so this is the fodder beet here. It's normally harvested on the 1st of December. Last year, if you go and check last year's video, um, that video was actually uploaded the same day that it was harvested. Uh, I managed to get that one done pretty quick. So it's probably going to be harvested either the 1st or the 2nd of December depending on uh, conditions and when the harvest operates it gets here um, so this is what it's looking like and to be fair it's not looking great it's not looking as good as I was expecting it to be especially for fodder beet but there's still going to be a crop here it's not the end of the world um, but you can just see the leaves there have been destroyed there by pests 
unfortunately it's just one of those years there is going to be a crop here um, it's just how much there's going to be is going to be quite interesting so it's a shame that it hasn't sprung back for the fodder beet you know you'd, we'd have thought that it would have kept growing at least um, until December November time um, but it just hasn't really done that well unfortunately this year the bulbs just not the bulbs are just not the same size as they normally are um, and, they, and the crop was very badly damaged early on by pigeons so a couple of weeks ago as well we brought back the red poles from the marshes um, I couldn't actually film it because it was really difficult to film getting them in and also as well getting them in uh, and completing the, the job of actually bringing them home um, but there they are just on the nine acres field there they've just got some straw racks and some hay racks they're just outside there at the moment because if we bring them in we're going to be using too many resources feeding them and bedding them inside so the idea is that we can keep them out for a bit longer by keeping them on that field so that's that's sort of the objective there um, with having the red poles out they'll be coming in certainly in december december time anyway um, back into the main yard um, but the idea is to just save resources um, it's, it, you don't have to use as much straw um, for bedding down when they're outside for example so um, it's actually a little bit drier that field it's a light sandy field it's on a slope the water drains down um, so they, they'll be pretty set on there uh, until December time. Just walking back from the fodder beat here and this is the bird cover crop here so this is for the environment this is for a lot of the wild birds on the farm and this is actually due here to be flailed up next year so I'm going to have to bring in the machio buffalo here and flail it all out using the buffalo which is about 2.8 meters wide so I'll just go along each side and then after that um, we'll, we'll hopefully as well have the new cultivator by then so I can cultivate the strip and either it'll be incorporated back into the field or it's going to be re-sown as a bird cover uh, crop. So it's going to be quite interesting using the machio um, to just sort that out and also as well having the new cultivator on board which is probably going to be the Pottinger or the Kongskide at the moment. I'm on the fence about the two but hopefully you guys can help me out on that one. Um, so another thing about the cultivator as well is that because this farm here is quite a light sandy farm we're hoping on the farm to use the cultivator to do the primary cultivation so we're not going to have to do for example as much ploughing we're going to try and just on this field here for example the maize field we're going to try and simply cultivate it with the new cultivator and then just straight drill it and then hope for the best really so i wouldn't say it's minimum tillage it's more of a we're doing a primary cultivation and then drilling um it's hopefully going to work it's going to be a bit of an experiment um, if it doesn't work over the first year then we'll probably just revert back to the old ways of the conventional plough um, but it's going to be quite a bit of fun trying out this new cultivator with the new tractor. Just come back to the farm it's now just gone quite dark so I'd just like to say a big shout out to Olight UK for sending me this Seeker 2 Pro. I'll leave a link to this torch in the description down below it's dark this time of the year you guys know that and check this out so it's a 3200 lumen small torch and it's got a range of 250 meters if we just turn it on here pretty dark I know but you'll just be able to see the power of this small baby here so we're on one light so if we hold the uh, the torch down we'll then go on to two lights and look at that power and then if we hold it again we'll get the full three lights and let me tell you guys this torch is tiny in my hands here um, but just look at this and it is going pretty much the whole way across of this field here so not bad at all for such a small torch so yeah, I'll leave the link for the torch anyway in the description down below. Huge thanks to Olight. This is going to be so handy over the winter months. Okay, so I'm just finishing up here for the day. So remember, we've got the new cultivator to choose from. Let me know in the comments down below because I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think about the new Pottinger, the Kongskide or the Lemken cultivator options? Give me some feedback on that because I'd love to hear from you guys. Go and check out the rest of the Horse Arena videos when we were originally building it at the start. And also, I'm super excited for the bale wrapper. And there's going to be something as well coming at Christmas, which is going to be very, very exciting as well, guys. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great Sunday. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.